So not everybody in here has been involved from the beginning. I'll give you a little you know, tiny Reader's Digest summary on uh, some of the background of RISC V and where it came from. But I'm going to primarily talk to you about the structure, the foundation. We get a lot of questions about what we do in these forums and the workshops and what we do in foundation meetings. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And I'll give you an update on the momentum and where we are with the actual structure, uh, membership uh, status in terms of companies and, and universities, uh, as well as the um, seems like lifelong thesis project of mine to uh, get a membership agreements and bylaws ratified and, and released. So you, you might know this, this stuff comes from Berkeley. Uh, back in 2010, they were looking at, hey, what are we going to use as the uh, basis for our next generation of research uh, in terms of ISA. And they've done a bunch of different things in the past. Two obvious choices were x86 and ARM. Lots of issues uh, from complexity to IP. So they decided, hey, let's just we'll, we'll crank up this three-month uh, project during the summer of 2010. We'll, we've done a bunch of ISAs previously. Um, so we'll get our own clean slate ISA in three months' time. And you know, away we go. We'll use that in the next as part of our curriculum. Well, four years later, uh, that three-month project uh, got released as part of the initial frozen base user spec. Lots of tape outs and publications along the way that you've probably seen. And risk five, for those of you that don't know, the V is Roman numeral five, um, is actually the fifth generation of risk-based research dating back to uh, Dave Patterson and Hennessy's original work. Um, way, way back in the day, risk one, two, SOAR, and SPUR were other project names. Uh, dating back to the early 80s. Um, I guess it was in the, at the January workshop in Monterey in, in uh, January of 2015, uh, Kirsten and Dave sort of uh, poked me in the ribs and said, hey, you know, we could use some help getting together. There seems to be a little bit of interest in industry. We could use some help getting together a foundation and, and make sure that this is something that lives beyond the labs of Berkeley and is not controlled by any single organization. So. We wanted to create an open nonprofit uh, legal entity, and we filed articles of incorporation a little over a year ago, August 2015, to govern the ISA. So it's a nonprofit uh, consortium. We're, we're here to standardize, protect the sanctity, and promote the free and open use of Risk Five and the underlying software and hardware ecosystem. I get this a lot. Where can I get my open source core? The foundation is not in the business of producing or, or you know, releasing or, or condoning or otherwise critiquing uh, processor designs. The foundation is responsible for the ISA spec stack and protecting that and extending the roadmap and making sure that we all agree on what the ISA should do. All you good folks are more than capable and perfect at uh, creating you know, processor designs, be they proprietary or open source. And we're going to continue to encourage that. And you'll, you'll, you know, you heard from the sci five guys earlier, you'll hear some more stuff, stuff about that. Open source designs are great, obviously, uh, as, a, as are uh, proprietary implementations for commercial gain. So you can certainly, we'll probably try to figure out how to promote everything that's out there. Uh, but one of the things that, you know, sort of separate church and state, if you will, the, the RISC V Foundation is about the ISA specification stack. Implementations will, will come and go, and we like them all. So some of the principles uh, behind the foundation. Always uh, be publicly available and, uh, and downloadable online. Uh, the, the standard will remain open and license-free. We'll talk about some licensing things in a moment. We've had a few conversations in some of the uh, mail lists. We're also going to have... Uh, open source compatibility suites. Exactly what that's going to look like and so on will be determined by the task groups and the technical committee that we'll, we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, but part of the part of the sanctity, protecting the sanctity part of the ISA is making sure that when somebody says, yeah, hey, this is a RISC-V device, well, what does that mean? A RISC-V compliant device, exactly what does that mean? And what, you know, what uh, test suites will that device have, have passed? And that gets us to the trademark licensing and so on. We want to be able to make sure that when someone says in their documentation, yes, this is RISC-V, and they're using the RISC-V logo, that they've done a bunch of things uh, for that right. 
uh, and in, in particular, if those products are commercial hardware products, uh, that there, there is a licensing agreement. And for those of you who are on the software list, uh, there was a, a discussion that kind of went circular for a while and at the risk of almost spir spiraling out of control around how we're going to enforce the trademark licensing. Uh, it's still a work in progress, for one, uh, but the intent is that hardware, silicon hardware, will be subject to this, right, in terms of the membership agreement. All of the open source uh, tool chain activity, OS activity, won't be subject to that same licensing agreement. And we'll, we're going to craft the terms such that everybody's organization, hopefully, is comfortable with what they are. And so if you feel strongly about how that, what that needs to look like and how that needs to read, I want to be your friend, right? And have you as part of a little group that we're going to have uh, that uh, will be uh, helping us review what that trademark licensing language looks like. Some key functions of the foundation. Um, one of them is to host workshops like this. Uh, but the main function is to be the official repository of all of the risk five specs. And to date, these have all been um, uh, UC Berkeley tech reports, right? And you'll, you'll start to see, and we'll be talking about this over, over the next few days, you'll start to see gradually how those tech reports are going to come into the, to the various technical, the task groups and the technical committee. And as that specs being updated, it will be issued as a risk five foundation document, um, uh, controlled by the, by the foundation. Another, another thing that we're, we want to continue to do and, and call is, um, there was some cool research uh, that Dave led at, at Berkeley around just the, the genealogy, if you will, of all of the instructions and all the different processor architectures that have existed over the last uh, several decades. Um, so one of the things that we want to continue to do is be able to point to and source documentation that supports the history um, and expired patents and microarchitecture techniques around processor design so that we can all learn from it because certainly the you know the guys the guys at Berkeley are bright guys uh, fifth generation um, uh, worth of research and and hindsight being what it is lets you not repeat some you know some things that we may have all learned together over over, over time and we want to make sure that we can continue to do that so how's the foundation organized? We have a board of directors, which we announced at the last workshop, and we can go through that. It's on the site if you want to go see who they are. And the board is ultimately responsible for making sure that the mission that we've filed and, the, and our articles that we filed uh, as a nonprofit are, are, and the rules that we say we're going to live by in the form of our bylaws, the governance documents in, in the terms of our bylaws and our membership agreements, that we're actually living uh, by those. Um, the, We've got a, a rotation period uh, on the board seats where there's, it's, as, it's a minimum seven member board. Um, and every year, at least two seats will be up for re-election and they will be elected by the membership. The, the board has a responsibility of appointing chairs and vice chairs. We actually elected the, the, the ones in the, that we have in place right now, but ultimately any, uh, uh, task groups or technical committees and then underlying task groups or marketing committee and underlying task groups that we put in place, those committees ultimately report to the board. And it, the, it's the responsibility of, of those, those committees to deliver on the charter that you know, has, has been uh, put before the board. And we're also looking at, uh, as I announced earlier this morning, we're gonna host this workshop in May uh, in Shanghai on the 9th and 10th of May, uh, hosted by our good friends at NVIDIA and the uh, Shanghai Jiao Tung University. Uh, so that'll be exciting. Um, the, the international interest that we have in, in RISC V is, is pretty staggering, actually. Uh, we'll probably have a workshop back here in the Valley every year, and the spring workshop will, so this one at this time of year will be in the Valley and the spring workshop will bounce around uh, to different, different parts of the world. Bunch of different classes of membership that give you different rights. All of this stuff is available on the, on the, on the site as well. Uh, but as you'll see in a few slides, we have uh, members across each of these um, uh, levels. 
And you know, we well, obviously we are very, very uh, thankful for the amount of support that we have. Uh, the, the bottom bullet, and we get asked about this a lot, the bottom bullet, um, we have not created the members, individual membership yet. Uh, we're still working at getting the language right in the bylaws and, um, and, and broader memberships, but it, we'll, we'll probably have individual membership open sometime in Q1. And all, the, all of this means, so why would I want to be a member at any level? The, the work, we're, we're trying to strike a balance between making sure that this, this technology and, and the foundation will last to, to protect it for in perpetuity, right? So a, a, some amount of corporate class um, uh, membership and fees help to make sure that that happens. But at the same time, we want everybody to be able to participate if that's what they truly want to do. So uh, hence the individual membership. The, the other thing is that the, the mail lists that we have uh, and the amount of activity and discussion and chatter that are on those, you don't have to be a member to participate in, you know, obviously, uh, you know, mail lists. Uh, the, the actual voting on and influence of the spec work that will get done in the tech committees and the marketing work in the marketing committees, that will be within the membership. And we'll, we'll talk about those in, in just a minute. Okay, so where are we? We have the articles and everything filed last year. We're in good shape. We've actually filed a tax return already. So uh, it helps to legitimize who you are in the, in the eyes of the IRS. And that's an important, important group to make sure you stay on the right side of. Um, we've got over 50 members now uh, that, are, that are part of the organization. The board of directors was formed uh, in Q2 of this year and we have, uh, gosh, I, I don't want to jinx it, but we have what we believe are our final set of bylaws and membership agreements um, be, that are being ratified by the board uh, members right now, uh, which hopefully will hopefully will have out in uh, in the next few weeks here for for the rest of the membership to sign off on, and then in Q3 um, we elected chairs and vice chairs for the technical and marketing committees, and we'll. We'll talk about some of those folks in a moment. So it's a it's it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, colorful chart of of platinum members. Some some interesting companies to, uh, for sure. On the gold silver uh, auditor level, I have a, a visual aid prop. We always get asked about products. Here's a production time lapse camera in China that is based on. Uh, a RISC-V soft core in a micro semi FPGA designed by Rumble Corporation. Uh, Mike is somewhere around. He can wave somewhere. There he is back there. So 1080p, it's, an, yes, it's, a, it's a cool little thing. This is his second production RISC-V product. Right? He's, he's got a RISC-V core in a proprietary dentist camera, of all things, uh, that has been in production for about a year. Right? So, you know, the ecosystem is young for sure, but it's obviously, it's growing rapidly and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's no, no question. Mark down the 9th and 10th and uh, plan, plan your, chip, your trip to Shanghai. Uh, to be honest, the, the growth that we've seen is staggering with like, as I said at the outset this morning, 350 attendees registered, 354 actually, registered for this workshop, representing 104 companies, I think it is, and 20 some odd universities. It's, uh, it, it's really, um, on occasion, it's, I'm having difficulty even catching my breath, uh, trying to keep up with all you guys. So with that, any questions for me before we tee up a run for the marketing committee update? Really? You guys ask me a ton of questions when it's just one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> oh, scared one up. I'm just curious about Intel. Any information on why they're not platinum members or gold members? <laughs> so I, I guess I don't have to repeat the question. I think everybody heard it. Um, so I, I, the only thing that I can say about any company is my job is to talk to everybody. And that's, that's what I do. 
And I will continue to do that until they tell me to go away. <laughs> and then I'll do it again. <laughs> Sorry, stop. You mentioned promotional materials on one of the slides. Oh, you want a t-shirt? <laughs> yeah. Yes, and you know, we don't have any promotional material at this workshop, and we will. One of the things that I need to get uh, you know, personally help with is functional technical committee and marketing committee activities so that the, you know, this kind of stuff runs itself a little more than, uh, than we have right now, and we'll get back to that. It's coming. I, I cannot answer a debug question from Samsung. <laughs> Uh, I, I noticed you um, mentioned one of the aims of the uh, foundation was to publish some uh, previous risk techniques. Uh, so, uh, and I've heard that discussed before at previous uh, Risk Five workshops. And one of the justifications was that that proved that all of the stuff in the ISA was prior art and that it wasn't paid and encumbered. Um, and I'm wondering whether uh, you didn't mention explicitly in this presentation whether one of the aims of the foundation will be to make sure that there aren't patent traps in using the RISC-V ISA. So for instance, some other equivalent industry bodies have a requirement that any contributions, people declare that if they have a patent interest, they won't pursue that interest and so on. Are you going to put something like that in the membership agreement? I'd have preferred the debug question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, good, good question. Um, you really had two. One was, the the, you know, the design history and tricks and all that good stuff. So on the on the risk5.org website, um, in in the support drop down menu on the right hand side, there's a genealogy page. And if you go to that page, uh, the the work that I referenced earlier that uh, Dave Patterson led is there. So it shows basically the history of where every instruction that's in in the uh, in the ISA today, what the genealogy of that instruction may or may not have been. So that's, that's that one. Uh, as far as uh, contributions and how the spec uh, will evolve and a member's responsibility uh, with respect to patent disclosure and so on. Uh, so that's why it's taken so long, right? So in terms of getting the membership agreement and bylaws in place, that language has been, um, as you can probably appreciate, extremely entertaining with the list of logos that are on this slide. And that's been the bulk of what I've been doing for the past year. So we have about 50 companies. Uh, so if you think about it, 50 companies, yeah, one a week-ish, right? And it's, it's more than a five or 10 minute conversation with each company, I can assure you. So what direction are you going in then in terms of the patent policy? Uh, full disclosure. There's no, and, and, and well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the details of what's in the membership agreement until it's ratified and we get it out, but it's, it's full and un 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 unencumbered disclosure of any contribution. The challenge that we have is we can't force every company in the world to be party to our membership agreement. But obviously the more companies like this that we have that are, and, and this that we have that are party to the membership agreement, the stronger we will all be. Okay, thanks. That's it for me. Nope. I still, nope, nope, I'm not, one more. <laughs> Go ahead. I take it the, the genealogy will be extended later to include uh, non-instruction non features like privilege spec features? Uh, probably, although I don't know for sure of any work that's active in that space right now in terms of being able to uh, point to those publications. But the, the intent of the entire ISA, right, is that it just remains free and open and unencumbered for, for use by everyone. So that's work that we as a community are going to need to take on. 